Since I started programming, I have always enjoyed most making games and sharing them with my friends. This is for example a game that I have made in 24 hours. It was fun to make, but even more fun to share it with others and see them getting addicted to it. More or less. There has always been something lacking though. The ability to play the game with someone else. I have tried making a local multiplayer game, and it was an improvement, but the thing that I have always wanted to do was to make a real multiplayer game over the network. It would allow me to play the game with all my friends and probably win every time if I wanted. Without cheating, of course. The thing is that making a multiplayer game is hard, and I have tried it a few times and it failed. So I thought I'll give it a proper try this time. This video is inspired by user games tutorial on making a multiplayer game in C++ using Inet, where he makes a similar game. So if you want to try it yourself, check out his video. I will also talk about some design principles and pitfalls when making a multiplayer game, so you might also want to stick till the end of the video. I will be using Inet as the networking library which uses the UDP protocol. UDP works by sending units of data called packets. The information that gets sent from the server to the players will get sent as fast as possible, but some packets can get lost all over the way. Inet provides some internal mechanisms that allow you to trade speed for reliability, if you need it. You can either have a fast connection, but with some packets, or a slow connection, but one that is reliable. So you would for example send some reliable packets of the player info and then stream unreliable packets to update the player's position. I will be making this game using C++ and some custom libraries and frameworks, but this is not very relevant. All I have here is a setup that can open a window and receive input and display some graphics. The first thing that I had to do is choose the art factory. I found this nice asset by Adam Atomic on Ish.io and started to add it into my game by making a grid based world and also added some information about the collision of blocks and the texture of this. Next, I had to make a level editor to be able to create a map for the game and after stealing some code from other projects, I got a basic level editor up and I used it to make a simple level to be able to test the collision system. After some more code stealing from other old projects, I had a working to the single player game. Now it was time to add a character and start coding some gameplay. I also took some time to create a bigger map in order to test some equations. The trick to making a multiplayer game is that the more reliable the get to send over the network, the more lag you will have between players. You'd think that sending unreliable packets would be faster, but you can spend those either, because we will quickly flood the network and you'll have the same problem in the end. The trick is to simulate the whole gameplay on every client, as if all the players were local and then update their data from time to time. I chose to send a packet every time the player changes his input. For example, when I start moving to the right or I stop. I also send one every few milliseconds to make sure it's still updating. You usually use unreliable packets for player movement and reliable packets for things like getting a hit or shooting bullets. My first attempts had some small problems. But after some trial and error, I finally got the player movement. Bullets were particularly interesting to implement. Usually two players won't have the exact same state at the same time, 
so it is possible to shoot a player and see the bullet hit him, but from his perspective, him seeing that he dodged it. Usually, the player that shoots the bullet will decide if the bullet collided with the other player or not, because it is not his fault if he sees the other player some pixels to the side than it actually is. After some more testing, I finally present you the final product. There are many more things that could be done to improve it. One would be some anti-cheating system. This requires the server to validate and synchronize all the user inputs and comes with some difficulties. For now, however, I am happy that I was able to make the game work smoothly with multiple people. If you want to take a look at the code, the GitHub page is in the description. This is about it for this project. And if you like this video, don't forget to like and consider subscribing. See you next time.